there's some weird things going on in my games room tonight. Anyway, it's time for my top 10 Halloween games. Hi everyone, hope you're doing well. Thanks for pressing play once again. I'm the man they call Pixel Paul, and this is my top 10 Halloween special. So I've called this my top 10. I've done a series of my top 10 videos, and this is my top 10 uh, Halloween games. So it's not necessarily a strict kind of top 10 games of, of mine. I tend to do top 10 favorites of mine, but this time I'm kind of going with top 10 games that you can play perhaps around Halloween time. Some of these I do like to play around Halloween time. Um, and yeah, some of them are, what I would say about them is they're possibly not the most obvious choices. So you'll see a lot of videos and uh, around Halloween and people will be picking out things like, you know, constant sort of Resident Evil, Evil Within, um, you know, those kind of horror sort of games in a way, Until Dawn. So I've tried to go, I've tried to keep things as close to sort of like that Halloween spirit as I can, if you like, more sort of traditional sort of Halloween spooky kind of games, perhaps, rather than sort of out and out kind of horror games in a way. Um, but there are one or two horror games in there as well. So let's get into the uh, games that... Oops. Not sure what that was. Oh, right. Not sure how that happened. Um, yeah, so these are sort of uh, Halloween-y games, more traditional possibly sort of Halloween games. Um, and we'll have a look at uh, what games I've selected. Okay, so my top 10 games for Halloween then. No particular order, like I said, this isn't necessarily the greatest top 10 of you know greatest horror games or Halloween games, but these are just 10 that I've sort of picked out that I thought were quite good for Halloween. I've done them in alphabetical order. As, it's, uh, as it turns out, my probably my favourite two are actually at the bottom of the pile, the bottom of the sort of 10 or spaces two and one, perhaps. Um, so, we'll, yeah, obviously we'll save those to last. So my first one is... And on the PlayStation, it is Alone in the Dark, the New Nightmare. Um, so I haven't actually played all of this game yet, I must admit. Um, I only got this game a couple of months ago. And um, I've not actually played Alone in the Dark before. And um, I have kind of started this game, admittedly, a few weeks ago now. Maybe in a few months ago, I did give it a quick go. And it is quite creepy. It is a very, well, it is a very creepy game, actually. And um, I must admit, I quite liked it. It wasn't quite what I was, I was expecting, in a way. Um, and it's quite old school, you know, with the sort of fixed camera angles. And um, But yeah, it's got something about it. Alone in the Dark. I think Alone in the Dark is almost a perfect kind of Halloween game, in a way. So it had to make the top 10. Um, I've gone with this version, rather than like the, the Xbox... Was it a reboot or remake? I'm not sure. That's the only other Alone in the Dark game I've got, to be fair. Um, so I've gone for that one. So that's a good start. Alone in the Dark, the new nightmare. Next up. So now it's weird because this game is based on a TV series. And in the TV series, Halloween is actually sort of considered to be like the bad guy's night off, if I remember correctly. Um, so possibly not in keeping with uh, the Halloween spirit in a way, but hey-ho, it's a really decent game, this actually. And it's Buffy the Vampire Slayer Chaos Bleeds, PlayStation 2 version, this one. Uh, and this is a surprisingly decent game, surprisingly good game. Most sort of TV licenses are not usually that great. I'm thinking of things like Dark Angel, CSI perhaps. Um, but when this came out, it was a pleasant surprise. And at the time, I was a big fan of the TV show as well. I liked Angel as well. That was a good show. Um, hard to believe this is over 20, 25 years old now, this TV show. Um, but yeah, this is not a bad game at all. It's, it's almost like a sort of 3D uh, roaming uh, beat em up in a way or fighting game. Um, as you would expect, really. Um, you can play as all of the characters there. Xander, Faith, Buffy... Spike and Willow and I think at some point you even play as Sid the Dummy I think as well if I remember right and um, so yeah that's a decent little game for Halloween as well now next up is a genuine sort of classic and you have to have uh, you have to have um, one of these games I think around Halloween 
ideally, I must admit, there is one other game that I probably would have liked to have picked, but sadly I don't own because it's so expensive. So I've gone for this one, which is quite an expensive game these days as it is, um, but it's also one of my favourites in the series, and it is Super Castlevania, or Castlevania 4, um, on the Super Nintendo. And yeah, another brilliant game. Uh, platformer, obviously. Um, amazing to think this was one of the sort of early Super Nintendo games as well. Um, but a real sort of showcase for what the Super Nintendo could do graphically. Also a showcase for what it can do sort of uh, with the sounds as well, with the music. The music to this game is fantastic, as you would expect from a Castlevania game. Obviously, if I could choose any Castlevania game, I would probably go with uh, Symphony of the Night because, I mean, that is... Is that the definitive Castlevania experience? Probably. But I don't think Super Castlevania is too far behind it. It's different to it. Um, but obviously... I haven't got um, the uh, Symphony of the Night so um, because it's so stupidly expensive nowadays. So yeah, I've gone for Super Castlevania on the SNES. Next up, and it's another Nintendo game, um, and this is this is like a proper sort of Halloween game because it features one of those more traditional Halloween monsters, if you like, uh, and it is on the Game Boy, Doctor Franken. So I've, for some reason, I've spoken about this game a couple of times recently. Um, but it is a game that I really do quite enjoy. I do like it. It's um, such. A, it's a quite a small game in a way, but graphically and um, again musically, it's really amazing how much they sort of they crammed into this game. Because, like I say, it's not the biggest game, but it really pushes the Game Boy sort of graphically. Now, when things are sort of moving quite, uh, you know, quite a bit on screen on the Game Boy. It does sort of suffer from a bit of screen blur, which is a shame because, like I said, the, the graphics are very sort of detailed. You don't really see much of it there. You might be able to tell a little bit. Um, but yeah, it's, it's quite a creepy game for the Game Boy. Um, the music that, that plays all through the, the game is, uh, is it the, uh, I want to call it Moonlight Sonata, I think, Beethoven, is, is it? I thought, or Mozart, no, Mozart, I think. Um, but yeah, uh, Dr. Franken, Game Boy. I really, really should pick up the Super Nintendo version of uh, Dr. Franken because I've never played that and I do love this one. So yeah, that is the next game. So the fifth game that I've chosen, and this is a bit of a wild card, this one. Again, this is a recent pickup. I've not had this game this long and it was only, I think, last week that I actually uh, gave it a go and tried it. Um, but yeah, I think I only picked this up last month, I think. And it is Ghostmaster, the Graven, Gravenville Chronicles on the PlayStation 2. Now, this is a bit of a weird one. So it's not quite what I was expecting it to be. Um, it's essentially a bit like a... It's almost a real-time strategy, in a way, with ghosts. So it's basically, you are a ghost master and you have control of... Well, so far, what I've played, about four or five different types of ghosts. And you basically have to scare like teenagers out of their houses and that sort of thing. Um, but it's quite good. Um, it's not perfect. It takes a little bit of getting used to. I think it's more suited to probably PC. And I think there is a PC version of this. You can sort of feel that the fact that, you know, some of the controls feel like it would be more intuitive on a mouse and a keyboard. So it definitely has the feel of a PC game in a way. Um, but yeah, I've quite enjoyed what I've played of this so far. I was pleasantly surprised, actually, because um, I wasn't expecting too much. And like I say, I thought it was a bit different to what I was expecting. I thought it was just going to be a bit of a run-of-the-mill, spooky, 3D roaming sort of platform type game. Um, but it's not. Um, there's a bit more to it than that. And so far, I've quite enjoyed this. Okay, next up, and this is the fifth game, and this might be not controversial, but people might be surprised to see this in any sort of top 10 because it's not the world's greatest game. It's it's, it's really not, but at Halloween, it just has that little something. Um, it's a game by Rare on the Xbox, uh, and you probably know straight away which game I'm going to be talking about, and it's grabbed by the Ghoulies. And um, yeah, this is, it's. I mean, it's fairly sort of standard rare stuff. It's all sort of 3D platformer, uh, collect them up kind of game. And um, yeah, it's not their best effort, but it is kind of spooky. It's kind of creepy. And there's just something about it that I quite like. Um, I think it's, I mean, graphically, it's not bad. 
Um, the, actually, I think what makes it is probably the, the soundtrack and the, the, the sound effects. If anything, that's one thing that I feel that they probably nailed in this game. Um, but yeah, it's not a bad game. It's just not great. It, when you compare it to the other sort of rare games, um, it, it's, it's just sort of falls short. And I mean, it didn't sell particularly well on the Xbox. But as a Halloween game, I don't think it's too bad. Not too bad at all. So grab by the ghoulies. Uh, next up we've got now you might be surprised that i'm including this version of this game because not that long ago i was talking about uh, one of the games in this series on the nintendo 3ds and i actually think maybe that game is at the time i thought that game was possibly better but i have revisited this one a little bit and yeah i, I think this is probably still you know the best version of it um, and it's luigi's mansion 3 on the nintendo Switch. Now I don't play the Nintendo Switch all that often. It's just it's not a console I've ever particularly got on with. Um, but one of the games that I did play, I, I played through uh, Mario Odyssey. Um, loved that. And probably the other game that I really really played was this one, Luigi's Mansion Three. Um, and I yeah I do like Luigi's Mansion. I like all the three sort of Luigi's Mansion games. And although I did love Dark of the Moon, Dark Moon, Dark of the Moon, or Luigi's Mansion Two. Um, yeah, this one is probably the best. Um, it's just probably got, you know, every, it's got so much more to it. You know, you, you are sort of searching through a hotel, so it means you're going up various different floors of this hotel, which are haunted. Each sort of floor is sort of slightly differently themed. And yeah, it's just a bit of a spooky game. Not scary or anything like that, obviously. But um, yeah, I do like that one. So that is in my top 10 for Halloween. Now, moving on, we're going into... Well, these next two games are, you know, your survival horror games. And um, they are more sort of uh, you t what you'd expect from a scare list, if you like. I am going down the Resident Evil front. And strangely enough, I'm sort of starting at the starting at the beginning and going all the way to the end. So first up, I've gone for Resident Evil and I've gone for the Nintendo GameCube version because I still think this is the definitive version of this game. I know there is a version of it on the Wii as well, but I just, I just prefer the bog standard remaster, remake um, of this game. Um, and this was one of the games actually that sort of tempted me to get a GameCube back in the day. Um, I think it's just an absolutely amazing reworking of that original sort of formula. It just looks, oh, it, just, it just looks so dark and grimy and creepy. Um, the Resident Evil on PlayStation 1, the original version, is, you know, it's great. It's a great horror game. But the visuals are quite colourful. They do pop a bit. Um, whereas I think in this game, unless you are going near sort of like a flame or a light, the, the, the colours in this game are a little bit more sort of bleak and dark and grimy and just more horrific looking in a way. Um, and it is just a, a very sort of creepy game. And every horror game that has come since... Or survival horror game that has come since has always been trying to beat resident evil really and um very few get very close to it um so for me resident evil on the gamecube absolute stonewall for uh, for halloween great game and like i said speaking of resident evil i've gone right up to date with this next one and it is resident evil village or resident evil eight it is eight isn't it eight um so yeah this was i must admit i'd not played much resident evil since resident evil 4 i mean i played five and six um you know when they sort of came out on the xbox 360 um but I'd not really, you know, all the other sort of uh, side games and remakes, I'd not really dived into the Resident Evil that much um, since Resident Evil 4 um, back on the GameCube. So going back into Resident Evil on the PlayStation 5, um, it was a bit of an eye-opener, actually, and it really sort of reminded me of why I kind of liked this series to begin with. Um, there are a few sort of standout points in this game that make it really genuinely creepy. And I'm thinking of, I think it's the second, not level, second sort of almost chapter. I think it's the second chapter. It's either the second or the third. Uh, and it's it's the house with all the dolls in it. 
or and that bit did give me the chills it's a very creepy sort of section of this game and um, there's just dolls everywhere and the main sort of uh, enemy that in that part of the ha part of the game is um it's like a woman who's possessed by the doll i think it is so it's a really creepy part of the game and um but yeah the rest of the game is just brilliant i really enjoyed it um i did pick this one over resident evil 7 um or biohazard the vr game which i have played i think that one's all right but just for me just resident evil village was just just better i haven't played resident evil 7 in vr yet had i played it in vr that may have made the list over this but um i'm saving that for a maybe lighter days perhaps so yeah resident evil village Right, on to my last pick then. The, my favourite game for Halloween time. Um, I think this game is a classic. Um, I, I've always loved this game. I was lucky enough to be able to rebuy this. I think it was this year, or was it late last year? I can't remember. I think it was. I think it was this year, early sort of car boot season, the car boot sale season. I uh, managed to repick this up. Um, but yeah, I just think this is an amazing game. Zombies on the Super Nintendo. Now it is more kind of almost like a B movie type game rather than a spooky kind of Halloween game but it does have all those kind of Halloween well some of the Halloween kind of uh, characters in it your zombies werewolves um giant babies all that sort of thing um <laughs> but yeah um I, res uh, resident zombies and I always want to call it zombies ate my neighbors uh, which was the title I think it was going to get over here but we in the, in the UK ended up with it coming over as just zombies I think Zombies Ate My Neighbours was the American name for it. Um, you can get this on Switch, I think, Switch Online, and I think you can get a physical copy of it as well with Ghoul Patrol, which was the sequel. Um, but I would recommend, if you can, get the SNES original version, if only because you get that creepy title screen. which you don't get for some reason on the Switch. Um, you don't, it, they didn't include it. And that's one of the best bits um, of this game, which sounds weird, I know, but um, but yeah, Zombies on the Super Nintendo, excellent for Halloween. So I hope you enjoyed that quick top 10 list of Halloween games or games you can play at Halloween. Um, let me know if uh, there are any games that you think should be in there. Obviously there's loads of horror games. Horror games are such big business these days and there's been so many over the years as well. Um, but yeah, let me know your favorite horror games or let me know your favorite Halloween themed sort of games as well in the comments. Um, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, if you can hit that subscription button, that would be very much appreciated. Have a great Halloween and I'll see you next time. Around the garden, like a teddy bear. <laughs>